The electricity powering the screen you're watching this video on was most likely just generated moments ago at some kind of power plant within a few hundred miles of you. Today, most electricity in the United States is still generated at natural gas or coal plants, which are great because you can build them pretty much anywhere, but are bad because of how we're all going to be dead in 15 years. That being said, some types of power plants can't be built anywhere. Hydroelectric dams can only be built on water, for example, and wind farms can only be built where they grow wind. And in the last few years, we've been building lots and lots of wind farms. But as you can see, we've mostly been building them here in states like Kansas. And sure, that's great for Kansas, but no one actually lives in Kansas. It's still uncharted territory where no man has ever dared tread. We need that electricity over here, where Dave & Buster's is. So the question is, how do you get that power from here to here? And the answer is this, the soon-to-be-built Grain Belt Express. Now, on the surface, the Grain Belt Express is a very simple idea. We're building a wire that goes from here to here so we can shove all the electricity in Kansas into one end and make it come out here at the other end. If that's enough of an explanation for you, then great, just go ahead and skip to the ad read. But if you can believe it, it turns out that sending enough electricity to power 3.2 million homes halfway across the country through a single wire is actually kind of complicated. And if you're interested, here's how it'll work. The United States' power grid looks like this. It's actually two power grids and one infrastructural temper tantrum, but that's a whole other thing, so don't worry about that. All of these connections here are transmission lines, wires that are taking electricity from where it's being generated to where it ultimately ends up, and the vast, vast majority of them are short or medium distance alternating current lines. That means the electricity in these wires switches direction a whole bunch of times every minute. In the United States, it's 60 times a second, in Europe, it's 50 times a second, and in Japan, it's both, which it turns out is a whole thing. The reason we use alternating current is pretty complicated, but basically it's because it's much easier to step the current up or down to fit whatever's being connected to the power grid. If we weren't using alternating currents, we would need an entirely different power grid for every type of appliance. If that sounds like a nightmare, it was, because we actually used to do that. Now, here's the thing. As convenient as they are, typical AC transmission lines like this can't be infinitely long. In fact, they can only run about 155 miles or 250 kilometers between the place where the power is being generated and the place where the power ends up. If you try to take electricity generated in the plains of Kansas and move along one of these lines to a house in Indiana, you lose too much of it along the way, and now John Green can't write his next book about lepers kissing or whatever. So the question is, what can move electricity that far? Well, it's complicated. First, let's talk about how wires work. Let's say you're trying to transport, I don't know, 10 hamburgers through a tube. Or, you know what, no, they're electrons. I'm not doing an analogy for this one, grow up. You're trying to move 10 electrons. I'll put faces on them if that helps, but that's it. Now, the electrons in an AC line are moving back and forth, and that creates a force in the middle of the wire, which has some kind of sciencey name that I'll put on screen in tiny letters for nerds to look at. This force pushes the electrons to the outermost part of the wire, with the middle part having almost no current at all, and that makes it easier to lose more of them as heat as they travel from one place to another. This is the thing that's bad, and we need to fix. You can kind of cheat this by distributing the electrons into a bunch of tiny wires that are all bundled together into one big wire, which is why most power lines look like delicious swirly pops that you, and I can't stress this enough, should not try to lick. But if you want to get rid of this problem entirely, you need to use a whole different kind of technology to transport your electricity. And here it is. Okay, I guess that just looks like another wire, but I promise that this is interesting. This is an HVDC line, otherwise known as an electrical super highway. And unlike almost every other transmission line in the world, these lines move electricity as direct current in a single direction at extremely high voltages. Since they don't alternate, they generate much less heat, which ultimately means they can move electricity much, much further. But they're also a huge pain to build because anytime you want to connect them to an actual power grid, you have to build a giant expensive converter station that turns the direct current into the right frequency of alternating current. That means that these really only make sense when you need to move a lot of electricity really far away, like the North Sea Link, which moves power from rural Norway to the considerably more populous England, or the Pacific Intertie, which moves power from the hydroelectric dams in Washington all the way down to Los Angeles, a place that people live for some reason. Soon that list will also include the Grain Belt Express, taking in wind power at a converter station in western Kansas and moving it across the Midwest. The plan is to dump about half of that power here at a converter station in Missouri, and for the rest of it to make its way to the Indiana border, where it can continue on to the PGM grid and power all of these states in the east. This will take years of construction, archaeological surveys, land rights negotiations, and about $7 billion, but this is maybe the first time ever that I'm making a video about an infrastructure project that's actually a good idea, so honestly I don't know how to end this conclusion. Uh, yippee?
Now, once again, I have written a video about America while abroad in Europe, and it literally would not have been possible without our sponsor, NordVPN. I've talked about this before, but trying to access American websites, especially things like local news sites, which I use all the time when writing videos, can sometimes be completely impossible when outside the country. EU privacy regulations can be hard to comply with, so a lot of American sites just block the entire continent instead. But with NordVPN, I'm just one click away from connecting to an American server and having access to everything I would have back home. And better yet, Nord ensured that all of my research was completely safe and protected. When you're traveling and using public Wi-Fi, you're taking a dangerous gamble. It's easy to connect with the wrong network and lose your data, your files, or even your identity. But with a VPN like Nord, your connection is encrypted and your data is safe. So if you use the internet while you travel, or even anywhere outside of your home, I can't recommend NordVPN enough. By signing up with my link, you'll get a huge discount, and you'll also get four extra months free with a two-year subscription. And hey, if you end up not finding any use for it, it's no problem, Nord offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just click the button on screen or follow the link in the description and try Nord today.